Fizz from the side right. of the Taipei Assassins. We can see it's going to be Calista Jason Thresh being taken away from Hong Kong Esports. No surprise that the JC is getting banned out here. Morning just had an absolute field day on it. Elise first picked here, though, for Refrain. Played a really great Krakus game. So that will be open if Dinter wants to play that one. Uh, but now we can see the Malachi and Alistar have been locked in for HKE. Okay. So top laner and the support established. And now on the side of Taipei Assassins, we'll see what they want to lock in. I'm really curious. So far, we're kind of seeing the reflected pick ban phase on the side of uh, Taipei Assassins. They're taking the Elise. They know Refrain can play it. Refrain, um, you heard Mountain say in our, in our brief little interview that Refrain has been stepping up. So I expect to see him play this Elise pretty well. However, it's a different team comp. And we talked about how you really don't need to change anything when you're winning. And I'm really not a fan of the Braum pick uh, against HKE. It's normally considered very good against those sort of pork poke composition, sorry, uh, but it's not really effective in a lot of circumstances. It's almost exclusively a disengage-focused uh, disengage pick. Yep. So we'll see what these guys want to do with the next round of picks. This is much more standard for Hong Kong Esports, what we're used to seeing from them with this Alistar, with this Maokai. The Sivir's available. I will not be shocked at all if they go ahead and pick this one up. It's actually God Kwai coming in, though, so that's something that we should touch on. God JG is, is not being brought in. This is kind of why we took that longer break, is they yeah. brought in God Kwai. They needed to talk a little bit more about strategy. We needed to sort it out some technical difficulties. It's, it's uh, yeah. But overall, I mean, God Kwai coming in is a, a little bit less than inspiring on the side of Hong Kong Esports because while I do think that God Kwai is a competent player, he hasn't shown us too much in the past, and God JJ has shown success. And so despite God JJ falling behind in the other game, I really think it was more on Toys than it was on him because Toys is such a crucial part, whereas God JJ has always been in that utility role anyway. Um, God Kwai, though, coming in. We're going to have to see what they pick. They're saving him this last pick. That's a really interesting choice. Usually they save that for Toys. However, um, you know, they're, they're giving it over to God Jay, to God Kwai. They want to give him that safe lane. And as a result, it's kind of forcing TPA to make some more interesting picks. I'd be interested to see this, if this Lulu does, in fact, get locked in for Morning. It's a very safe laner. It was a top laner for a long time. And it's within Morning's champion pool, so it does make a lot of sense. Well, it's also something that we saw banned away by Hong Kong Esports uh, in, in the first game. So it made it through, and they go ahead and they lock it in as well as the Sivir. So well, we will see that Lulu in the mid lane. And that Brom Sivir coming back out, this time for Taipei Assassins. We'll see if these guys are going to be able to play to greater success, but a very <laughs> quick lock-in. The Bane Alistar bot lane for Hong Kong Esports. Scott Kwai, he's going to try his hand on uh, one of the hardest AD carries to play, but we have to talk about this, of course. It's the Twisted Fate for Toys. Well, this is an excellent composition because what they want to do here is split push. They have the Vayne, who is a constant split push Thresh, who is picked into the Sivir to stop her ability to split push. And they also have Toys, Teleport, the Twisted Fate ultimate, Dinter on this Rek'Sai. We've seen this global map pressure comp before. We saw it uh, game three, I believe, against Flash Wolves, and it was absolutely destructive. We're going to have to see how it works against Taipei Assassins here, but I like these picks coming out from HKE a lot more. They're playing more to their element. They're picking a playmaking support. Uh, for Ola, better something better off for them than the Braum. Unfortunately, um, hey, there's still a lot of questions here. And with God yeah. Kwai coming in, we can't be sure how this bot lane is going to do. I can't be sure at all. And once again, these guys are the two that I want to keep my eye on, these junglers. So the Elise being handed over to TPA this time around. We'll see if there's going to be a little bit of a better performance for Refrain coming into this one. So not too sure, but he's going, you know, but uh, on the side of Dinter, he's falling back onto the Rek'Sai, something that he can play very consistently and be very aggressive with. You know, he likes to go uh, for that early Black Cleaver, just pump out a <laughs> lot of damage and then just tank up from there. Uh, so if he can get going, I think that uh, he's strong enough that he can kind of just be like, hey, HKE, hop on my back. I'm going to carry you guys the world. I'm going to, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what they do here, exactly how they make this composition work. On the side of, uh, as we get into game here, on the side of TPA, Refrain, I think, should be able to make a lot of plays with this Elise in the early yeah. to mid game. And it's a lot stronger champion in the current patch than Gragas is. I think Gragas has fallen out of favor in part because Elise is so strong. Oh, yeah, she's uh, certainly taken off because of the Rune Glaive and her, all of her changes and whatnot. So we'll see how Refrain wants to handle this one. He had excellent map mobility and just appearance across all lanes in that last game. So we'll see if he's able to have. You know, a better performance. Uh, he played quite well, so I want to see if he can match or 
exceed his performance on the Gragas. He's arguably much more mobile now because he can use that rappel to get over you know a, a bunch of different walls and whatnot. So we'll see what's going to happen. We also have to keep our eye on Morning. Uh, still a poke heavy champion with this Lulu, but a def definitely a, a much different play style compared to Jace. So we'll see how that one's going to play out for him. But what I like about this pick is that it's clear that they've uh, TBA has adapted a little bit in the sense that they want to force an early mid game or mid lane advantage with aggressive picks. So they used the Jace against the Diana in the previous game. Obviously that's more of a fumble for HKE, but TBA saw that that works, so they're taking this Lulu in the early game. And Lulu, one of the most aggressive, one of the strongest lane bullies in the game, it should have the power to shut toys out early on. Yep. A lot of questions to be asked, but only time will tell here. We can see TPA getting uh, geared up at this bot side of the map. Uh, HKE is as well, so pretty much all five members of each team going to be condensed down to that bot side. We'll see where these guys want to go with the double jungle. And it's interesting that they've opted for the standing la standard laning phase. Once again, Braum, not an amazing 2v2 uh, laner. Really does well on the lane swaps. Obviously, concussive blow is a lot more useful when it's an unexpected element as opposed to a staple of a laning phase. Uh, gives you a lot more opportunity when you roam around the map. However, uh, opting for the duo lane here, it looks like they're confident in their ability to shut down God quite early on, which is pretty much what Sibber always does. Uh, that ricochet, just so strong. Yeah, that is a really great way to start this off. Almost get the full concussive blow stacks and oh. now in the mid lane, we can see that Toy's actually taking a lot of damage from Morning. He's playing very far forward in this lane. Uh, the CS will be in his favor. He's going to go ahead and chug or munch down on those biscuits that he's got sitting in his pocket. But a lot of damage coming across. It's actually the help picks that uh, Morning is taking first, not even going for the Glitter Lands and still able to work him down that low. Impressive play coming out here for Morning so far. And this is the early game for Lulu. So remember that as we scale into the late game, Lulu's damage will fall off. But right here, level one, level two, this is when she's the most dominant. Uh, yeah. Help picks, Glitter Lance, Ignite. Toys has to be careful. He's burning through all of his pots. And unfortunately, Morning CS is falling behind. But the amount of pressure he's going to be able to put on Toys is going to force a response from Dinter here pretty shortly. Yeah, we'll see where Dinter wants to pay his attention to in this game. Likely going to be paying a visit uh, in, you know, into this mid lane quite soon. Try to take down Morning, who just absolutely took off in, on Jace in that last game. Going to start off, go ahead and pick up that scuttle crab here to the start. Refrain picking up his blue buff. Going to help him work his way through this jungle and maybe get some early ganks off. He's going to look to have a lot of presence uh, early on. You know, Elise was a very strong ganker. Uh, offers so much damage as well as that lockdown from the cocoon. And one of the big things we have to look at is where these junglers are going to apply their pressure. Because bot lane as a 2v2, Vayne's going to fall behind early game pretty much no matter what. She's just not as strong as a lot of other champions yeah. in terms of fighting potential. She just cannot get on top of that Sivir reliably until she has uh, her ultimate available to her. However, the top lane, this tank fight, these two guys who are just going to trade small amounts of damage back and back without any impact, yeah. if someone gets a lead in that lane, that dynamic changes instantly. Oh, mid lane, though. Yeah, we can see Toys taking a lot of damage. Morning doing a good job weaving in those auto attacks, just working through the health bar of Toys, who's just not being able to find any ground in this matchup. God quite to get a little bit of damage there from that boomerang blade and the auto attacks from Lupin, who's applying pretty good pressure in this lane so far. You can see 11 CS up for the Sivir. Looking oh. quite good, that's a huge engage though. And now here comes Ola, trying to do what he can, and the exhaust comes across on the Lupin. That's gonna be teleported on the back side as May tries to arrive. Huge damage going out onto the Sivir. Can they take it down one more hit? He flashes away, but the gold card lands onto Jay. Toys here as well, they condemn him into the wall. A lot of damage, but here comes Refrain from the sidelines, concluding lands onto God Quiet, who's trying to fire off the damage as best as he can. Refrain goes in with the Repel. Looks like he's gonna get the first blood, and he does! Takes down Ola, and now Refrain doing what he can. God Quiet trying to kite around the yellow card lands, but here comes Morning. Jay goes forward. The concussive blow stacks are coming in. God Quiet, can he get out? He does not. The cocoon lands. That's Refrain getting up the follow up kill. 2 0 for TPA. HKE finally find the will to be aggressive, the strength, the rotations, the, the teleport coming in from Toys, but it's not enough. Refrain is where he needs to be and brings that one out. That was a beautiful counter gank. Lupin and Jay waiting on their flashes so patiently and baiting in HKE. HKE just got played. They thought they had the advantage there for so long and everything turned against them.
Wow, what a turnaround for Taipei Assassins, and that's exactly what they need to do to kick this game off and net themselves a second victory. We'll take a look so, at this replay right here. Watch this again. They think they have the advantage here because Lupin is so low. Lupin burns Flash early, but Jay is so tanky, even just at an early level, because of that stand beside me. But the amazing counter gank comes in here, puts so much pressure on Ola, and this is a level three Twisted Fate. He's essentially a stun bot. He doesn't really do much of any damage, can't clear the waves yet, and God quite over-aggressively flashing, but Jay is more than happy to trade here. Elise, on the other hand, that's a level Level three Elise. This is a monstrous character in terms of raw damage, yep. in terms of the stun utility she now provides when she gets on top of you with the Spiderlings. Not a single one of the champions on the side of HKE can 1v1 this Elise. Elise is looking unstoppable right now. 2-0 yeah. the score coming what, in for Refrain. And what a good start. Almost has the Sheen ready to go for the Runeclave as well, and that is just... She's already strong without that, and just getting that for herself is just... It's going to be game-breaking here. And we can see that the rest of Hong Kong Esports are suffering heavily. This Vayne pickup is just not playing out so well right now. Of course, it does still have that scaling potential, uh, but they're really going to kind of have to hunker down and try to make it to that late game for this play, this pick to uh, you know play out for them. So the thing I want to talk about is that Refrain and the rest of TPA have identified how strong he is in this game. And they've decided to change the kind of the pattern for itemization here. Elise still frequently itemizing Cinder Hulk because of the raw tanky stats it gives her and because her scaling just isn't amazing, right? So you don't get as much out of that. But they've yeah. seen that Refrain has such a significant lead. Uh, kind of like we saw Dinter building the rune game on Evelyn, right, when he would get ahead. And they know they want to shove this lead in the face of HKE. And the best way to do that is to give so much raw damage over to this Elise. And I, at this point, it's working out very well for them. Yeah, working out well indeed even in CS as well. And then just up that item, so very good start for Refrain, who, you know, once again, he had a fantastic performance on the Gragas. He's looking to have a repeat, if not do better than that with this Elise, and so far paying out, paying off quite well here for TPA. Toy's not yet able to find, uh, you know, an impactful uh, presence in this match. Does not have that level six for the Destiny. Teleport's gonna be down for a little bit longer. May now has his as well. Had he had that in that fight, it could have been completely different, but Unfortunately, and didn't have it. Remember that May actually wanted the TP there, but there was a big contra or a big fight at the top lane over teleporting. Uh, you know, Yui was up top. I believe his teleport got tan canceled by May trying to stop and come out. Dinter was up there as well, but unfortunately, they weren't able to get that kill over to Yui. You can see the CS that he gave up in that exchange, but overall, you can see the advantage the TP has still been able to gain despite that. Yeah. See some uh, minorly invasive play around the bot side here. Dinter. Has to be a little bit cautious as he gets ready to go for this Gromp. I'm trying to clear up that ward. We can see Jay playing so far forward. Going to be looking to get those concussive blow stacks going on to God Kwai, who tries to tumble out of the way of that Glitter Lance, but he's not able to do so. This tower going to get worked down here. Lupin, of course, at this point with that pickaxe, is going to be able to make pretty quick work of it. It's already quite low, so this one will fall. We'll see if there's going to be any kind of fight. Dinger gets grabbed up, and he's just getting melted through by Refrain, who has so much damage on the side of this Elise. The tower does fall. Jay still playing forward as well. Lands the Q. They might want to follow up on this one, but I don't think they're going to be able to. TPA they let are, him feel out of here, but TPA this, are crushing HKE right now. Look at yeah. the CS difference in this bottom lane. That's a 40 CS advantage for Lupin. Kodquai brought in on a very mechanically difficult champion, as you said. And I mean, despite what looked like a pretty even early laning phase, he's not getting anything here. And it looks yeah. like HKE's panic to bring in Godkai to swap out God JJ is now turning against them because this vein. I mean, that's a double longsword. Yeah. She's been forced into buying inefficient items. Well, not inefficient because she's going to get to play the Rune King, but less than ideal items. She can't yeah. go back and finish that cut list, which means she can't trade with this Sivir under any circumstances. Oh, yeah, no. She's not going to be able to trade for Sivir for quite a long time. You can see First Dragon getting picked up here at the nine and a half minute mark by TPA. Already a significant gold lead as well. This is uh, monumental. 2.4 thousand at nine and a half minutes is a massive deficit to be suffering. And HKE. They're going to have to play so cautiously moving forward in the rest of this game. We can see 38 to 80 CS. God, by doing what he can to pick up these minions down around his tower, but it's going to take so long for that Vayne to actually scale to the point where he can be impactful in these team fights. And really, mid lane falling behind as well on the side of Toys. He's slowly recouping that loss as he does have the item advantage over Lulu. She hasn't been able to back to buy quite yet. And Morning still playing the matchup very well. Knows that he can at any point cancel Toys' teleport. 
forcing him to stay in lane because he can force or because he can match the wave clear pressure that TF provides at this stage of the game. And as a result, Jay and Lupin now free to roam because Godquai has to farm. Godquai doesn't do any damage. And yeah. as a result, TPA, the map is theirs. They can go anywhere and everywhere that they want to. Yeah, and they're looking to do just that. Lupin now pressuring up this top side of the map with UA. Going to try to look for this tower as quickly as he possibly can. Of course, you know, it'd be risky to try to dive onto Ola and May here, but they might just have the power to do so, especially with Refrain now joining the fight. Dinter comes up to the stop side, has to unburrow, and there's just no way to really safely clear this wave without suffering a lot of damage. But TPA cannot dive. I mean, you, there's just no way you're diving a Rek'Sai, Alistair, Maokai, yeah. right? So they're mostly safe under the tower, and it's going to take TPA a very long time to push that one out. So it looks like they're shifting their focus el elsewhere. You can see after they took that dragon, they shifted their ward control up onto the top side, and now as a result, they can rotate freely through that top side jungle and pressure out this mid lane. Ding. Just the tip of that boomerang blade hitting toys. Takes a good chunk of HP off him. Looks like they might want to dive on him as Jay comes around the back side, but toys quickly rotates out to safety. Will keep himself alive for the time being, but right now, it's looking like Toys is going to have to be the savior of this game. And even he is down in CS. We can see that Morning's Lulu is up about 20 Well, the right only now. reason they're not falling infinitely far behind is just because May has a 30 CS advantage in the top lane. May has been able to bully out the Shen, pressure out the Shen, but once again, it's not a rumble. It's not his Gnar. There's not a damage threat here for May. So yeah. it doesn't matter if this Maokai is ahead, because at the end of the day, he can go in and tank as much damage as, as he wants, but they can just walk past him and ignore him because there's no damage threats for HKE right now. Vayne, completely an irrelevant factor, has to buy the recurve bow instead of finishing the Cutlass just yeah. to be able to farm better uh, and push out lanes better. But it's just not enough. Not enough indeed. HKE going to have to do a lot of work to get themselves back into this match. This is, uh, I think, the biggest deficit this early on in a game that we've seen in general. Even in the playoffs, you know, a couple weeks ago, we never saw a performance like this this early from a team. Uh, so this is just absolutely no, just and phenomenal and methodical play coming up from t uh, Taipei Assassins. Well, and, the question is, can they keep this up, uh, you know, and not slip up and let HK gain any ground in this game? And it just looks like they know exactly what they want to do here. They, they've they done their research on HKE and how they've been playing since May has joined the team, since Grayson has unfortunately left. And it looks like they know. They know that HKE tries to force these early ganks, tries to force these early teleport plays with the TF. And they say, we're just going to follow you wherever you go. We're going to outmaneuver you. Uh-oh. Oh, Dinter. They go ahead and they, uh, they're going to find UA here. And now it's going to be the Destiny popped. Does Toys want to follow through? I don't think he's going to. I think he's just going to stick to that. Mid lane, Ola getting taken quite low. Oh. Morning ripping through him. He flashes forward, but it looks like Ola should be able to get himself to safety. Still a pretty tanky Alistar. He will be hold on to his life as he retreats into the base. The good news is uh, that despite falling out there, obviously because of the immense amount of map mobility that both Toys, Dinter, and May have with their each of their global abilities, respectively, yeah. they can get back into this jungle. They oh. oh, Refrain with the seal away. Smites away the blue buff. That is going to hurt. Toys uh, immensely. He's not going to be able to throw out those wild cards. And this is a uh, really good pressure by TPAs. They look to go take down this tier two tower. Good damage coming out. Lupin doing what he can. Throws out that boomerang blade. Rips off Toys' HP down a half. And even if HKE try to go in here, Jay has that glacial fissure. He can stop this fight so quickly. They have the wild growth to disengage as well. And while their team may not be best in the mid to late game, right now in this mid game when Lulu is incredibly strong, when Sivir can provide so much pressure against the limited wave clear on the opposite side, uh, there's just really not a whole, HKE don't have too many options. There's just not enough to keep them going. They have Shen for disengage, they have Lulu for disengage, they have Braum for disengage, and yeah. the engage options on the opposite side I mean, if Ola or May go in, who backs them up? It's not Godquai, it's not Toys. Neither of these guys do any damage. Yeah. Right now, HK is going to have to put their head between their legs and pray for mercy from the side of Taipei Assassins, who are just playing such a strong game right now. Godquai still suffering in the CS department, but has closed the gap significantly, where he was down by about 50 CS, has closed that up to about 30, so still uh, not ideal, but significantly better than it was before. Nowhere near that uh, Blade of the Rune King mark quite just yet. He might have enough on the next back. I'm not sure yet. He still needs to finish off the Belchwater Cutlass and then have 700 on top of that to finish out the Blade of the Rune King. And but that would help him out immensely. He's still 
won't be able to one v one Lupin, however. And well, Lupin, keep in mind, Lupin's not even rushing the Infinity yet. She doesn't even need to fight right now. Yeah. He's gone with the standard tower pushing Sivir build, which is taking the Berserker's Grave earlier on. Of course, you cannot crit towers, so by building the Berserker's Greaves, you're doing more damage effectively. Yeah. You're a more effective pushing threat. The the sacrifice, of course, is you're a less reliable threat in team fights, but. TBA don't need to fight. TBA can push out these objectives, try to snowball this gold lead as much as possible, and I mean, there's really just nothing HK can do to stop it. Ole in trouble once again. Yeah, taking a lot of damage as he tries to run out of that one. We can see the dragon has spawned second dragon of the game. Dinner gets caught. Huge amount of damage coming through. One more hit for the concussive blows. He will go down. Lupin finds that kill. TPA taking out the smite threat of HKE. They're going to be able to take down this dragon with a little trouble, but they might want to go straight for this tier 2 tower yet again as they, they all rotate over here. The wave is coming to back them up, but they only have one wave stacked. This isn't really a great pushing threat for them. TF, now that he's level 9, has maxed those cards. Should be able to clear this pretty easily. It looks like they're unconcerned, though. Yeah, they're just going to force their way straight onto this tower. As it gets chunked out, all gets in, gets a very nice headbutt, pulverized. Jay taking a lot of damage as he takes up the front line. Morning eats that wild card. He's going to be taking quite low. May coming in with a fantastic flank position on the backside of the teleport. He's coming in. Dendra gets a pop up. This could be the fight that HKE needs. They go on to Morning in refrain. He's taking quite low. Gets contempted in the wall. Morning goes down. God, quite. Finding the first kill of this fight. He's going to find a double kill as well as refrain falls. And they find more UA getting locked up. Here comes God, quite. He's got the triple kill. May being taken down quite low. Toys has to flash away on the backside. The red buff might take him down. No, he is going to live. That's three for zero for HKE. They're right back into this game. They're going to take down the dragon. Oh, HKE coming right back so quickly. This is that mid-game team fighting identity that we know and love. This is the team that we have seen time and time again. Just kind of chill, just kind of wait. But the second they hit this mid-game stride, the second they see those engage opportunities, they make it happen. May made that happen. The teleport flank was beautiful. They got everything that they needed, and that Bane was free to run around and do damage. Look at this. Ginger from the side, blocked down. May from beautiful. the side. Three members inside this field, not able to deal any damage, and Godquai free to jump into Morning to take down this threat, and there's just no damage left once that Lulu is gone. UA, no hope, flashes right back into May, and this team fight overall, beautifully orchestrated from HKE, and TPA making the same mistake that HKE frequently makes themselves, overstaying their welcome, trying too hard to force those objectives, and as a result, giving something up in return. Yeah, that was a beautiful catch by Dinter. Identifying that flash on Burrow knockup, just catching them completely off guard, and that is exactly the type of wombo com the, the type of combination of abilities that HKE needs to get themselves back in. Still down in gold, the CS discrepancy is still massive across pretty much all fronts here. You can see that the spot lane uh, CS is stretching even more in favor of Lupin yet again. But if they can make fights like that happen, get God by these kills, that's what they need to do, and it's enough. It'll be enough to get them back into this game, especially with how heavily Vayne can scale in the late and game. And once again, it's good that you pointed out that God Quiet is the recipient of all those kills, right? All three of those going over to this Vayne. And, I mean, a Snowball Vayne is a good thing to have. Unfortunately, it's also God Quiet, this unknown element, and that's a lot of pressure on this relatively new player. TPA, though, they're not worried about the advantage HK where you'll get back. They're going for another tower. Yeah, and they're just going to keep applying this pressure where they can. You can see uh, it's actually going to be toys up to the top side. Destiny's available, but obviously he's not going to be able to close that much of a gap from the top of the bottom lane. So he's going to have to be careful, as will the rest of HKE, as they play forward here. But, uh, you know, applying some good pressure on that top side of the map, almost able to take down this tower. He has the Lich Pain, so his pushing pressure is pretty immense right now. And this is pretty good of him to actually stick around because he can deny the, the teleport or the stand united for Shen with the gold card if it comes down to it. Definitely. And, and that's why they've decided to position him there is that he has a semi-global ultimate which will help respond to some of those TP plays. But because Mei has no teleport, they can't. They don't feel comfortable leaving Mei alone in that lane. He doesn't have range either. He really has to commit to stop a teleport. Whereas Shen, uh, or whether it's TF, can just gold card, can walk away. Doesn't have to commit too much to stop that global pressure and can do at least a decent job matching it, at least until they, until Maokai's teleport comes back up. Yep, and we can see TVA rotating over to this top side of the map looking to finish off this tier one tower. Netting, it would net them their third tower of the game, which is pretty fantastic for not even the 20 minute mark here. HKE yet to break the turret line, would even up on gold pretty closely. But following this far behind, they're just going to have to be that much more cautious. TPA backing. They're going to get these items coming out. Looks like Lupin will be able to pick up his Infinity Edge on this back. Infinity Edge, of course, going to be a huge buy for these team fights. Not even going for it. Look at this. The entirety of his build is focused on split pushing, is on applying pressure. And 
We normally consider Vayne as the counter to the Sivir split push, but I don't even think she at this point can match the pressure Sivir's going to put out. No Infinity Edge completed. Static Shiv, Berserker's Greaves, more raw damage. It's all about pressure. It's all about pushing. TPA don't want to fight this HKE lineup at all. No, and why would they? They need a, a massive pick uh, to be able to start and engage. We saw Dinter come in with that Void Rush, get the massive knockoff. That's what allowed them to win that fight. If that hadn't happened, HKE would have been running for the hills. So they just need to play cautiously, establish some vision control, try to find a pick, and if they can do, take it, if they can find it, they need to just pull the trigger on it and go in. Uh, until then, they have to play very cautiously, kind of tiptoe around the map, uh, and then just try to get as much net farm as they possibly can. You see Morning yet again is just taking off in this lead. Toys will be able to farm up this top wave as it crashes into him, but even so, still falling further and further behind. You can see the Boots of Lucidity have been finished out for the Lulu, so that's going to be you know, more Wild Growths available, more Harass from the Glitter Lance, more Shields from the Health Picks. Uh, Morning is just going to offer so much more utility for his team compared to Toys right now. And it's good that you point this out, because once again, Morning, uh, as this Lulu, is more of a mid-bridge champion. A lot of damage in the early game, a lot of utility in the late. He helps get weaker early game team points uh, going and into the mid game. And you can see TPA using this Lulu pick to get early mid lane advantages, bullying toys out of lane. And now they're going to be able to use the Lulu to keep Lupin and Refrain alive, who are, who are slowly gaining more pressure as damage threats. You can see the Rune Glaive, the haunting guys coming out from Refrain. Clearly, the team has identified that they need a little bit more damage. They have a big, tanky front line, but they need something to back it up. So there's going to be a lot of pressure on Loop in this game uh, to be able to dish out damage in these team fights, to use that ricochet to full effect, to hit all five members of HKE. And I mean, the, the big question is, God, is God quiet up to playing this Vayne? Is Lupin up to playing this Sivir? Because this is going to be an 80 carry focus game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Morning is not going to be the big damage dealer when it comes to these team fights, unless everyone just kind of stands in a line and can get those glitter lances through everybody. But I, the uh, chance of that happening is, is, is pretty slim to none. Uh, but, you know, much more damage threat, like you said, on the side of HKE, because Dinter, he likes to play very aggressively with this Rek'Sai. He, he knows how to dish out the damage and use that Rage Bar, to, to, you know, off the Z to really uh, work through the HP bars of his opponents. So a lot more of a threat from the side of Hong Kong Esports, but still just need to work their way, get their foot back into the door. Effectively, I think, uh, you know, they're pretty close to having a lead. They're down two towers, and the goal is about 1.4 thousand in favor of TPA. They get those two turrets, and they effectively take a lead because these guys are even on dragons, they're even on kills. Uh, so T HKE is so close uh, to being able to finally get a foothold in this match. But and they're I, also so close to just falling off the edge uh, and just handing it over to TPA. Well, they've they've adopted an interesting strategy here. They're just trying to split push. Lupin, though, going in. Yeah, May being taken quite low. He's going to have to be a little bit careful. This should be the Tier 2 bot going down. Ola coming around the sidelines. I don't think he's going to be able to do anything to stop this one. In fact, he might just go down for it. Look at that huge chunk of damage come through as Lupin crits him. He gets knocked up by the Glacial Fisher. He's on the run. The Unbreakable Will is popped. The turret goes down, but they find Morning. It's going to be the Twisted Vance going through. Toys comes in, gets the yellow card to lock down, and here comes Godquai. He's going to rip right through that Wild Growth Lulu. The taunt, though, from UA, but now he might be in a bad spot. Godquai has the heal. Looks like he will go down, though. The fast forward, that's going to be the Mortal Blade. UA finds that kill, and now it's just May. The Arcane Smash does a good battle damage. But here comes Sinter. He's so low, he's not going to come out on top of this one. He goes down. It's another kill now going over to UA. It's a three for three, though. May not going to be able to output the damage to finish off these two tanky members of TPA. They trade fairly evenly surprisingly in that exchange, but TPA still come out on top. They have more gold in their pocket. And that fight was an absolute roller coaster. It went so back and forth. You see three members of HKE moving in to get that pick off on morning before the fight can even start. Unfortunately, they burned so much that Lupin was able to come in with Jay as that frunky ta uh, tanky front line to get, so look at this. They're they're moving together to shut down morning here. I love this approach. They know Lulu is crucial to the team fight composition and they're gonna take him down very early on. The issue is they do not expect the remaining members of TPA to get there so quickly, and Lupin, that crit with the static ship, ripping through Godquai. The downside, though, is no one does any damage to Mei but Lupin, and Lupin's gonna go down very quickly here because Mei is nigh unkillable. Dinter giving his life to ensure that this Sivir goes down, and as a result, allows Mei to run through the enemy team. Maokai base damage alone carrying him through that fight. Yeah, and th this is kind of the hidden curse uh, when it comes to playing a Vayne into a Shen. She does so much damage off of the triple shot that you almost don't see the Shen ultimate coming through on the <laughs> enemy. So, it's seemingly just appearing out of nowhere, Yue, uh, as he ulted on top of Morning there. 
And it just kind of pops in right as morning goes down. It's just like, oh, hey, I'm here. And it's a misstep for them to not know the Stand United cooldown, to not expect that Shen coming in. And it just shows that HKE, once again, seem to be floundering to make something happen. They do get to 3 for 3 overall, almost entirely on the back of May in that exchange. Uh, Dinter, of course, giving his life as well to make that happen. But it's not going to mean too much at this stage. TPA, though, just giving up this bottom lane turret for free, Never mind, he was split pushing the top, so they're just gonna keep trading objectives here. I don't know if this is what TPA wants, but they're making it work. Yeah, and Toys is gonna you know, try to apply as much pressure as he possibly can. Ludo Deco has been finished, so he's got a good amount of damage with that Lich Bane stacked on top, so. This is the point. a good amount of damage, but he's not gonna be able to finish it off, and UA finishes off the tier two top. This is the point in the game, normally, where HKE have a lead, and they force uh, lesser teams to make decisions. And you put them in the, in the choice where they have to choose between getting a dragon or losing a tower or, you know, losing a tower or losing a dragon. Yeah. But they can't do it this time around. They can't split that decision making because they're behind. And because the enemy team has just as many split pushing threats as they do. This Shen, this Sivir, can split push all day. They both have reliable ways to get back to the team fight. They both have uh, decent amounts of tower damage. And so Toys, you know, Still trying to play that style he did in the previous tournament where he would split push and apply pressure, but they just don't care. They can send one member to stop Toys. Toys doesn't have that kill pressure, and the global pressure threat just isn't there either because Morning, as a utility, uh, in this utility role, can pretty much stop any aggressive engage. Yeah. The longer this game goes on, though, the stronger HKE becomes. TPA does not scale nearly as well as this Hong Kong esports composition. I'm sure we're gonna see Toys likely starting to work on his uh, Zonia's Hourglass coming up here so he can kind of make those martyr plays. Uh, you know, just jump in with the Destiny, land the gold card, pop the Zonia's, wait for the team to collapse on top of your target. So likely gonna see him, you know, go for that one soon. You can see he's pressuring out that top side, trying to get that wave moving against. HKE are looking for this pick though. They have three members in this bush. They have all their cooldowns. They need to go in if they, yeah. or not. Yeah, no, <laughs> they just throw out the Prey Seeker, not gonna get the steal. And that will go ahead and alert TPA to... Yeah. And once again, uh, you can see here in the split pushing threats, both UA and Toys have matched up here. They're both going to follow each other to the corresponding lane. The issue is uh, they can both cancel each other's TP, so neither one really has an optimal way to get out. They both have two functionally global abilities. The difference here is that Toys is a damage threat, whereas UA is purely a tank. So losing Toys in a team fight is a huge is huge for HKE. They can't really afford a team fight without him, but losing UA for, for TPA isn't the end of the world. They have yeah. a lot of tanky frontliners. Uh, you know, Lulu alone can make Refrain into such a powerful tank threat that TPA just have a lot more flexibility in what they can do on a, in, in terms of map movement. It, they do, but it's also gonna be shrinking, like I said, as time goes on. God Kwai is actually proving us a little bit uh, a little bit wrong. He had a really rough start, uh, still suffering in CS, down 26. It's not nearly as much as it was, uh, but playing a much better game than we saw from him in the playoffs a couple weeks ago where he played Corgi. Completely suffered in that match. This time around in this vein, though, he's actually able to find some presence and stand his ground uh, and net himself a couple kills. Um, we oh, haven't seen anything happen, though, but here comes Dinter as they try to go in. The Glacial Fisher's not going to connect. Jay whips that one, but it's going to be because of blows. Dinter likely going to go down as Ola jumps in, trying to CC as much as possible, but Dinter will fall. Now Ola in a bad spot has to pop the Unbreakable Will and hightail it out of there. And this is just the presence that TPA has. And now their eyes are likely going to be on this Baron as Toys is still in the bottom side of the map. Toys is going to be able to get this turret. I don't think there's much UA can do to, to stop him from taking this, but the rest of TPA is going to be able to take this Baron. They all coming no up. Of trying to stop this one. Toys is going to use the Destiny. Oh! oh! The flash up. He, he cancels out the Destiny. UA with a fantastic flash off that Shadow Dash. They go in. Can Ola get the steal? It's not going to happen. Refrain find, finding that one out, and now it's going to be Ola going down. May and God quite hightailing it out. They get the catches. UA joins the team, and May is just getting devastated by the lines of TPA. They find that kill. They get the Baron. Toys doing what he can, trying to take down this mid tier one, but they should be able to collapse onto him. He's got the teleport, likely going to have to use that one with the flash. Oh! Force, he gets finished out. Morning finds himself the kill. No hesitation from any member of TPA. UA knew the flash taunt was the only way to stop it. He made it happen. So good that they brought this guy off the bench. He has made this happen for the team. An amazing tanky frontline Maokai, an amazing split pushing threat, an amazing uh, <laughs> canceling out all of Toys' pressure and making sure that Toys could not show up to stop that Baron Ola. Desperate to make a play goes in, but at the end of the day, TPA is here to win this series and they've got the tools to do it now as they push down this mid lane. Yeah, and Ola just getting oh. chunked out. He gets caught out and they melt right through him. 
the crit damage coming out from the server. Once and again! Here comes Cinder. They get the knock up. The rail goes up in the air here for Refrain, trying to keep himself alive. God, quite do what he can, but I think he's going to go down. Can he get the kill on this loop? And no, he cannot, but May finishes him off. And now Jay being quite low. Can the Malkai finish him? I don't think he can. The Cocoon lands to CC him up. He gets a twisted advance in, though, the pop up from Dinter yet again. Morning being taken quite low. He does not have the wild ghost. Here comes Toys. They get the kill. HK trying to turn this one around as much as they possibly can. They trade back three kills. Can they take anything on this map, though, is the question. I don't know if they're going to be able to pressure out this tier two. They have to be willing to dive the tier two. They don't have any wave pressure built up. They haven't had the opportunity to manage their waves appropriate, appropriately to get anything back. And, you know, HKE once again punishing TPA for overextending here. TPA just don't have enough resources. May coming in, burning so much. God, quiet. A little bit of a fumble from him, admittedly. Yeah, he flashes into the middle of the team and just gets targeted out immediately. And here, he's just kind of wandering around, not auto-attacking anybody. Finally gets on the loop, but it's too little, too late. Had he started attacking him sooner, likely could have gotten that kill. But Still would have gone down. Luckily, but. at this point, uh, you know, they have the perfect timing here where they focus down the Lulu, slow her down, let Toys yeah. get in to secure that kill. And while none of the tanky threats on the team can really threaten that Shen at this stage of the game, Toys is still very much a threat. Still does a lot of damage here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was really just Toys responding at the right time. The rest of the team knowing that they could go in, knowing uh, kind of in these larger scale team fights when their allies would arrive and managing that very well. Unfortunately, the only reason they could force that fight in the first place was because TPA had overextended in that yeah. instance. Really overstayed their welcome there. It was just another fantastic flank by Dinter. So, you know, yet again, going to have to be that force to try but to carry the team. We, we talk about, it's once again, it's just a consolation prize for their yeah. efforts. I mean, toys going in, though. We could see something happen here. Yeah, the Destiny's pop. Looks like they're just trying to spot him out. I don't know if they're going to be able to find any kind of pick here. Stan United is, of course, available for UA, so he's very comfortable split pushing. Toys is split off to the side. He doesn't have a way to get into this outside of TP. Yeah, he also has his flash down, so he has to be quite careful. Very easy target here. Of course, this inhibitor is now open. Dinter coming around the sideline, throws out that Prey Seeker. A little bit of chunk of damage goes through on the refrain, but I don't know that HK can find any sort of opening here. And TPA are very smart. They boarded their flanks. They know that the only way they lose this fight is that if Dinter and May can get into their back line. So they make sure to just approach this very safely. They're playing so patiently here. They have the Shen stand united, so they're more than content to split push on the bottom side of the map. They pull Yui down now to contest this. We could see a fight over this dragon. But there's no yeah. way HKE can contest. Yeah, HKE just would not be able to win that one, so they decide to give it over. But that's going to be on the hunt pop here. Jay coming around the front side. Likely going to get the slow on to make. Throws out that righteous glory for the slow. UA Toys TP, the Toys that's TP. That's going to be the TP coming in here as well. And now the pop up comes through, and the fight has broken out. Dinter on the back line, ripping through Lupin, but they lock him up, and it looks like he may just go down for this one. God Quiet finds the first kill of the fight, though, as Jay comes in. Morning gets locked up. He goes down. God Quiet with the double kill. Can they find more? UA, he gets locked up. Is that going to be the triple kill? No. Toys takes it away. But that is going to be a three for one for HKE. HKE clutch teleport. Uses Using that map movement as expected, baiting TPA forward, knowing that on the hunt would force them to engage, and they turn this around brilliantly. They bring their back line to May and Dinter. The only way they lose the fight, Dinter, three man knockup, two man knockup, but still so clutch on these Very back good. lane members, and the there's damage. nothing they can do. They can't kill Dinter fast enough as Toys and Godquai rip through the remaining members of the team. HKE once again when they find these team fights on their terms they're unstoppable they coordinate their cc so well they threaten the right people they target focus well as a team unfortunately they're still behind but this is a good showing from them in this mid to late game they're not oh, out yeah, yet we're missing a kill here actually may maybe going down but they clock down on the loop and he falls they kill him may not going to go down we did miss this solo kill though that refrain has gotten on the toys hopefully we get a replay so we can see what happened there in that regard uh, but, you know, that's just a testament to how deadly this Elise is right now with that Rune Glaive. Has the Haunting Guys in the pocket as well. Uh, just really tanky and a lot of damage coming across. And this is going to be enough for TPA to feel comfortable enough to go in and break this inhibitor line. And unfortunately, they just can't afford to trade right now because TPA is so far ahead, because TPA has such superior wave clear. When they lose both their damage threats, both Godquai and Toys, there's just no way they can contest any of the, the objectives that TPA can force. And really... Once again, this is the story of playmakers on both sides. Yeah. For HKE, it's Dinter this game. He's been able to show up in team fights, get those multi-man knockups, make things happen, and he's looking to make it happen again. Oh, Dinter goes in, he gets Cocoon, but he gets a pop-up. Morning has to flash over the wall, and they're still on the chase. The concussive blows could come through, stun him up. Looks like that will just be the disengage. 
Oh, and that was three calls. This could be enough for HKE to go. Well, I mean, they're going to finish off that tower. <laughs> we'll see if they're able to pressure any other points of the map. Baron up in one minute. There is almost no vision from either side in the pit. There is a single pink ward in the favor of TPA, but HKE don't really have much vision on the map at all. This is a team known for warding, known for controlling the map, and yet they haven't been able to keep to that identity as they've fallen behind. And as a result, I don't really think they can take the Baron at this point. They can't really get much of anything here. They do get the mid lane turret. They are slowly evening up the gold, but there is no real advantage for HKE. TPA just need to find one more favorable team fight and they can end the game, but HKE have to find fight after fight if they want to break this inhibitor line and end the game. Yeah, but right now the gold deficit isn't too significant. Two kills separating these teams. Two and two in Dragons. The towers are really what's in favor of TPA and what allows them to pressure the map so much because they can play so far forward. HKE, though, they're only down by 2.3, 2.4 thousand. That is not a lot at 35, 36 it's minutes. All, it's game. almost irrelevant, Yeah, honestly, it's almost between... irrelevant, especially with the scaling that they have here. So as long as HKE keeps playing these just heavy CC fights where they keep just getting you know the proper crowd control that they, that they need at the opening uh, for God quite to kind of just you know, tumble around and get those auto attacks off. HKE can very much win this game. It's completely down to execution from here. It's very true. And, and the big thing for TPA too is that they have Morning and Lupin who can both run into the back or into the fight and get really up close and personal, force you to back off. But if they go too far forward, if they're not willing to kite back as Dinter and May threaten to offer that CC or Ola threatens to jump in there. If Lupin and Morning get knocked up at any point, they can they will go down and they will lose that team fight in an instant. So much depends on these two guys being able to dish out damage effectively from a safe distance. Yeah, we see Refrain playing forward here. Throwing out the spiraling. Jay comes around, gets that slow over onto Dinter, but he's gonna be safe for the time being. May still in the bot side, teleport available. Maybe gonna look for a flank here. Not sure if they're gonna be able to find one. They don't have too many favorable wards for him to get that flank. He also might need a recall first so he can get that home guard advance. But we can see actually Toys has begun to really spill uh, this mid lane in his favor since we've gotten into the team fight phase and into the mid and late game now. Up in CS pretty significantly. This is the kind of deficit that we saw uh, Godquai in. So now he's taken over and he's actually just been doing quite well, 3-3 three, three and 7. Uh, you know, item builds coming out here. The Zonia's Hourglass has been completed. Just one more item to go. He should be able to get that one after a couple more fights as long as HKE doesn't get shut out. And you can see, because he's not itemizing uh, any sort of magic penetration right now, he's purely focused on eliminating these squishier threats yeah. like this Lulu, like this Sivir. Uh, and really what this CS deficit or the CS advantage comes from is all the split pushing that Toys has been able to do because unfortunately Morning now functions as an additional support for Sivir and has to follow her around pretty much everywhere, has to be willing to make to move and fight with the team because he doesn't have a way to get back into the fights. Yeah. But because Toys is free to split push, he's also free to CS and is going to steadily gain a larger and larger gold advantage. Unfortunately, when he hits six items, it's not relevant anymore. So they need yeah. to capitalize while Toys does have an itemization advantage. I'm sure that they are looking to do just that. Both top laners now in the bot side of the map. You can see a lot of TPA split throughout the jungle of HKE in this top side of the map. Clearing out these wards as best as they possibly can. And uh, the, the vision control from Taipei Assassins is just phenomenal at the current moment. We can see Baron has spawned up Dragon as well. Let's see which one of these is going to be the next. HKE uh, have warded up the Dragon, but are moving and posturing around the Baron. They're hoping that TPA will fumble in their decision making and they'll be able to capitalize on it. They have the vision now necessary to do so. They need some wards in the pit, but I don't know if they're going to be able to get them. They have the advantage in terms of map mobility here, but they need to find a way to use it. They really are just hoping that TPA make a misstep here, that they will group up in this pit and give them the opportunity to uh, to collapse on them. However, TPA are playing much more cautiously than that at this stage. They're aware that they're not as strong as they were in the early to mid game. They're aware that uh, they cannot afford to get piled on once again, because I mean, at the end of the day, HK are a team known for team fighting, but when we look at how they played at the beginning of the season compared to how they play now, they were five bruiser comps all day. That's all yeah. they played. So if there's anyone who knows how to force and win team fights with tankier characters, it's going to be HKE. However, no team fight there. They are going to get that dragon uncontested. Yep, so that's the fifth dragon of the game. Third for Taipei Assassins now one up in that regard. 5% move speed buff. Going to be quite nice for them, especially when they pop that on the hunt. Going to make them able to hound down the members of HKE that much quicker. HKE still just trying to find some sort of opening here. Gold lead, not really stretching at all for Taipei Assassins. It's still hovering around that 2.2, 2.1 mark. 
Uh, so like we said, the later this game goes, uh, the more relevant it is. I, I even go so far to say as the gold lead is completely irrelevant. At the, uh, at the, the, the dragon advantage here is actually, I believe, more relevant yeah. than the gold lead. Just because the gold lead is uh, manifests in a single item or... And I mean, at this point, it's the single item is probably the phage yeah. present. <laughs> I mean, present on the uh, for Lupin. So not really a huge deal here. But what is important, and what is important to be aware of, is that with three dragons, it's much easier for them to push for five. And yeah. because you can clearly see both teams struggling to have an impact, struggling to find these picks, is they're both very aware of how this late game is going to work. It essentially means that. I mean, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. Lost my lost my train of thought there. So you can see, Toys is actually going for another needlessly large rod. So picking that one up, we'll see where he wants to go. The Quicksilver Sash has been acquired for God Kwai, so going to be pretty necessary for him. I mean, look at the amount of CC that you have here. You got the slow off of uh, you know off of Morning on the Lulu. You have the Polymorph that he does, the and Cocoon, the Taunt. There's exactly. so much. That is a very necessary item to pick the up. And now that he it, has that, hopefully it can keep him safer in these team fights. Yeah, the only thing it doesn't work against as far as CC options go is the Wild Growth, uh, if he's adjacent to that knockup, or the Glacial Fissure, both of which are already pretty easy for Vayne to dodge. So really, in terms of CC, Godfly's in a good place. He should be able to dish out a lot of damage in the coming fights. However, once again, he, it's very reliant on HK being able to use their front line more effectively. Because at the end of the day, Lupin, it's going to be so much easier for Lupin to dish out damage with that ricochet than it is going to be for Godquai. Godquai, very reliant on that stealth to get into the back line, or very reliant on his front line to, to kind of stop anyone from threatening him, especially in this case, Refrain, who yeah. still does an immense amount of damage with those Spiderlings, especially since Godquai has no static ship. Uh, he can't deal with the Spiderlings effectively at all, so at least we'll be able to rip through his health bar if they ever find each other one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And yet again, TPA just playing comfortably far forward into the jungle of HKE, keeping that vision control very much in their favor, especially around that Baron Pit, which is going to be the next point of contention. And you can see. see the remaining members of TPA backing off here because they know there's no way for Morning to get to the next team fight. Morning, of course, focused on getting this wave control on the top side of the map, making sure this top lane is pushing before they move for anything. They do not want to risk getting backdoored by this Twisted Fate. And they're just going straight for the Baron. Yeah, this is an aggressive choice. And Ola is nowhere nearby. He's wandering out of the base to enter over the wall. We'll see if he can get a seal away. He's going to need to. The Destiny has been popped. He goes into the pit. Let's see who's going to take this one away. It's oh. going to be refrained. Dinter unable to get the seal. Now stuck in the pit. Has to flash out the safety. May goes in, though, with the Twisted Advance. God quite. It's Polymorph. Let's see if he can get anything. The taunt lands on a UA. He has to use the Quicksilver Sash. Let's see what they can take away from this one. Morning quite low, just trying to fire out as much as he can over the wall. UA will go down. It's going to be the second casualty of this as Jay is also falling. HKE taking away two members. Dinter almost going down. Barely gets away with his life. Baron goes over to TPA, but they take down two members for it. And really what happened here uh, for HKE is that once again, TPA put themselves in that spot that we talked about, where they could just get collapsed on. We're going to see as they take this Baron. Uh, Dinter's going to try to contest this as he goes in, but watch what Morning does, and watch how Morning uses his cooldowns here. We just have to watch. So, gets this. This is going to be fine. Now we see them come in. Jay burned out trying to block these guys from getting the Baron. May jumps to the back line. Godfly is instantly polymorphed. Ooh. But it's too early. The Polymorph yeah. is much too early. And as a result, comes out of Polymorph, gets taunted, cleanses that. Vayne didn't even need to do damage at that point in the fight, but Morning had to burn that Polymorph out of fear. And Dinter wow. making it out with a sliver <laughs> of life. But once again, HKE, they're just going to throw their tanky members into the back line. They have so much more reliable CC from Alistair, from Maokai, from this Rek'Sai, which means it's much easier for them to execute these team fights in the mid to late game because it's clear, if they kill Lupin, if they kill these tanky threats before Lupin can deal damage, they will win the fight. Yeah. Also, uh, you know, a pretty uncharacteristic flash pulverize there from Ola. Just flashes for it, just pulverizes nobody nearby, unable to find anything. Uh, arguably could have made that fight much more in favor of HK had he landed that. Um, but still, still in their favor. <laughs> yeah, they still get those kills. The gold that. TPA, you know, accrues for themselves off of that Baron is not going to be very relevant. This is just going to be HK having to kind of turtle up within their base, hold on to what remaining uh, towers and inhibitors that they have, uh, and, and make sure the TPA can't take any more. We can see that they are opting to go straight down this mid lane with these Baron-empowered minions uh, and try to take this inhibitor. Of course, it is exposed still. And Yui's, mo Yui's moving in on Toys to make sure that he cannot teleport out. He wants yeah, to make sure... Yeah, they both want to deny each other. That's going to be the Destiny coming across. Oh. Toys will be able to get out with his life, but that's only so much. 
A turret goes down in the, in the top side, but they lose the inhibitor yet again, so HKE gonna have to deal with these super creeps in the mid lane, and that's gonna really stop them from being able to pressure too many other parts of the map. And really the interesting thing about this is that Toys is slowly starting to lose these duels to UA because UA is just so tanky, and Toys doesn't really have much match. I mean, he finally gets the Void Staff, but it's a little bit too late at this point because yeah. UA is scaling up. I mean, Trinity Force Shen, as he has just now completed it, is ridiculously oppressive. This guy used to be uh, kind of resigned to being only a tank, but now he is very much, with this item alone, a threat to the back line. Yep, I mean, CTPA, they're going straight for their fourth dragon. I don't know if HKE is going to be able to contest this one. Looks like it's not going to be so. Fourth Dragon goes over to Taipei Assassins with little trouble. HKE, though, opting to push straight down this mid lane yet again. Maybe put some pressure onto this inhibitor tower. We'll see if they're able to think anything. Dinter stopping the backs, but they're not even going to try to push this one in. They're just wandering around in the jungle for the time being. Of course, the big thing to look at here is the sheer amount of dive potential on the side of HKE. They have the Talisman of Ascension. They can go in on their terms at any oh point. Oh, God, Kwai is taking a huge chunk of damage. That's not their terms. Yeah. <laughs> they can't go in on those terms. Yeah, if Godquai gets chunked out like that, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, and the Righteous Glory has been burned out as well. Look at this. Godquai has no additional lifesteal except for the Blade of the Ruin King. Because he has to pick up that Quicksilver Sash, he's not going to have a Bloodthirster to help him sustain in these fights. So he's got to be that much more cautious. Uh, you know, when approaching the enemy team. The good news is, with the changes to Bloodthirster, his lifesteal does proportionally increase based on the amount of health that his opponents have. And from what you can already see, there's a lot of tanky members on the side of HKE. But it does mean that if he has to focus down, say, this Sivir or this Lulu characters with less health overall, then his lifesteal will be functionally non-existent, which will make it that much easier to kill him. So at this point, he's pretty much just mitigating the Thornmail damage uh, from UA. That's like that's all that he's getting out of this uh, Blade of the Rune King. Outside of that, it's really not doing too much for him. The lifesteal stat that not very uh, not much to be reckoned with you yeah. know for the time being TPA very much in control here Baron is not going to be on them any longer but with that open inhibitor they still are able to pressure around the map at their will just gonna be looking for those inhibitor turrets the two remaining ones standing are gonna be the next target in their eyes so you can see Ola trying to get some kind of vision in his jungle but just get swept out immediately by TPA, who are just controlling all fronts of the map so well. And checking in on this game, both teams are functionally even at this point. The tower advantage for TPA is huge. The dragon advantage for TPA is huge. But in terms of a, of a straight up five on five fight, both teams are pretty much on even terms here. And they're waiting for a pick here. If they get this, the dragon or the baron will be theirs to take. And this game will end in their favor. But just remember, this is game two between these titans. I mean. Game two, and it's been so back and forth already. Game one looking like a stomp in the favor of TPA, but HKE aren't giving it up yet. Yeah, and look at this. The bushwhack not going to come through, but they go ahead and they pop the on the hunt. Ola taking down Kwai low, has to use the Unbreakable Will off the bat. God Kwai hitting Dovon in the back side. He's trying to kite as best as he can, but I don't think he's going to be able to live. He does not. UA finishes him off, and that's going to be the Sheen proc off that Triforce doing work for the Shen. They're trying to get on a loop, but Dinner's taking quite low. I think this might be the fight. For TPA to close out the game, they take down four members of HKE. It's just Ola on his own. This is going to be TPA taking the second game as they push straight down the mid lane. And Ola tried so hard to make this end in their favor, but that disengage was not enough. Godquai still getting taken out, took an interesting route out of that fight. And honestly, at the end of the day, they just were not able to do enough to end this one. Ola giving his life in the end here. And no fifth dragon needed, no Baron needed. After a 48-minute game, TPA find their win here.